it's recording. Okay. So today's the 25th. I kind of wanted to go into this team call with the momentum that I got from last night. Um, I know Katrina and Missy were on last night. Um, the team call, are you like giving me evil eyes because you weren't able to get on? <laughs> yeah. And I have um, but Meg was freaking fantastic. And I got so many messages except, especially from my new coaches, like, Oh my gosh, like, I know you've told me this Vicky, but it really, it is really about simplifying. It is really about being consistent on the things like you can do. And I know like a couple team calls ago, Cindy and I both said like, you know, like that's why time blocks are super important because if you say, you know, like I'm going to do two hours of business time, I'm going to do two hours. And then here comes the day that you're supposed to do two hours and your kid wakes up sick or you didn't get enough sleep or you have to do laundry or X, Y, and Z. And you're like, well, I don't have two hours to do so. I'm just not going to do jack shit. And we all do that. We all do that, right? Whether you're a coach, an emerald coach, a diamond coach, a star diamond coach, we all do that. And so one thing that Meg was saying is like, just do it. Just do it. Do it in the time frame that you have. You know, what did she call it? Like the mom time or the mom moments or whatever she said, like, and make, make the things that you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis a priority. Like I took so many notes last night. What did she say? Um, what did she say? One thing that she said was, oh yeah, to be, to be honest with yourself, because like a lot of the times, and you guys know that when you recruit coaches, they're going to be like, I've been busy all day long. I'm just not getting anywhere. Um, what are you doing? What action steps, what activities are you actually doing to help you build your business? Right? Because they're going to be like, I've been scrolling social media. I've been, you know, following up with dead weight, or I've been trying to get my inactive coaches active again, or, you know, all this stuff where you're basically watering dead plants, right? But is that helping you move your business forward? So one thing that and I totally wanted to ask Meg to call you guys out because you guys know how I like to put you on the spot on Tuesday nights. But I wanted to message her and be like, dude, call them out. Because when she said, look past, look in the past seven days. And I want you guys to do this right now. And this is why I just said it's accountability time. Because I want you guys, I want everyone to answer this. Look in your past seven days that you, from th today, Wednesday, to the last time we got on the Zoom on Wednesday, for those of you that got on it, how many hours did you guys actually physically work the business where you're doing action steps that are building your business? I want everyone to answer. How many hours did you spend in the last seven days? Probably three. Mm -hmm. I would say like 30 minutes a day. Okay. I've been doing about an hour a day. Okay. Dana? Uh, at least an hour a day. Okay. Well, okay. Well, except for three days because I had company in town and I punked out. I didn't do my power hour like I was supposed to. Can, okay. I, can I share something really quick? No. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I wasn't on the call last night, but obviously I knew what it was about ahead of time. And, you know, I've been obsessed with Meg since I started as a coach. I know. I, to I told her last night and everybody um, on the call. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm so bummed that I couldn't go, but it was my son's very first concert. So, the year, but, um, so, so like I was one of those people, like I know Vicki and you know, I've talked about this quite a bit about like, especially because my schedule is so flexible. I felt for so long that I had to do, if I, you know, if I wasn't working two to three hours a day on my business, then I was not a successful coach. And because I was a diamond coach and like a multi-diamond coach, like I'm not a star diamond, but you know, I've had my downline be like multiple diamonds, you know, like triple diamond and double diamond and stuff like that, you know? And so even though I don't have the star in front of my head, I have a lot of coaches that I'm working with. Right. And, um, so I felt like I had to be working that much to do that. So my dogs are like driving me right now. Um, it's like the whole universe is attacking our, our, um, our front door this morning, apparently, but that's not happening at all, but they think it is. Um, and I was stressed out all the time because I was having a really hard time balancing everything because um, I'm a really hands-on mom too and and I have three kids. And so I have another accounting business that is literally my full-time income and it generates twice the amount of income that my husband's full-time job does. And so I have to dedicate time to that, but it's super flexible and I'm paid very, very well for that, right? So I don't work like a traditional amount of hours for what I'm paid for that. 
And so I was, so I had free time in my day and I felt like I had to fill it with my beach body business. And then if I didn't have that three hours, then or if I wasn't able to work those three hours, I literally would not work at all. I would not do anything. Right. And so I've been reading the slight edge. If you guys have not read that book, you need to read it right now. I've read both the compound effect and the slight edge. And I believe that the slight edge is a better book in my opinion, but, um, the slight edge, because it gives you more like actionable real life examples of like how to apply the slight edge in your life. Right. And so I've been reading, rereading that because I read it like three years ago. And I told Vicki, I was literally going to just, and my husband, I was literally going to commit to an hour a day. And, you know, Meg was actually the gal that I tell all of my coaches this all the time. And I think I've said it probably on your team call. I don't know if she said it last night, but like she was the person and we had like a 60 days to diamond, like three years ago or something like that group. And it was like a 60 day group where we had weekly zooms. And she said, she was one of the guest speakers on it. And she said, you know, your power hour is like that whole thing of eating an apple a day. Did she talk about that at all? No, um, but I, but I, I, I talked about it. I said, Cindy, Cindy always said it was from you, but it came from the slight edge. But yeah, anyway. so I'm rereading the slight edge and I hear it because I've always like attributed it to Meg. So it's really funny because I'm reading the slight edge, but, but it's true. It's like, you know, you think it's like, we think that we have to take on all this work to do this business. So people are feeling like if they're not working two to three hours, they can't be successful. Right. You know, and so they skip it and they think, oh, I'm just going to catch up on my work on Sunday. And it never freaking works like that. It doesn't work like that ever. And so I'm like, you know, I'm going to put this into effect. So I've literally minimized everything in my life and I'm doing daily things every day. Right. So now I'm able to do my complete miracle morning because I'm only reading a chapter of personal development every morning. Right. So I'm reading a chapter and now I'm able to write my goals every day all this stuff. And I was just telling Vicki, I just, I simplified all of my group process because I've been listening to a lot of, um, things on, uh, duplication and like other network marketing podcasts and stuff like that. Things that are not beach party related, but the network marketing business building podcasts and everything you hear is about duplication, 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 right? Like in this business, you cannot sustain a business just being the sales force on your own. You have to be able to eventually rise up and then duplicate a process, right? If your process is so fucking complicated that no one has any idea what's going on, or for a long time, poor Vicky used to say to us, oh, just reach out to people, just have fun. Like she didn't have any process because she she never was good about writing it down. You know, now she does it. Now she shares what she sends out. But for a long time, she didn't do that, right? And so for a long time, just you do it. Have, but you didn't have any diamonds, right? Like you didn't have any diamonds for a long time because you weren't able to create a duplication process, right? right? right. And, or it was like too complicated or there's too, like, you know, I know that they're redoing the into, whole Misfit Republic website because there's just way too much shit on there, which all my coaches complain about. You know, you get a new coach that signs up and they're like, I have to watch like 8,000 videos and they all say different things. Like what the hell, right? Right. So, so basically the gist of it is I like some, like super streamline my stuff and I actually have just redone my process because I have a big free ongoing group that I would do weekly challenges in every week with for all my downline and all my customer prospects and customers and stuff like that. But I just changed it to what Vicky's doing duplication right here. Um, and so now I'm doing a free group. Like, so I'm going to do like one to two free groups a, a month for my entire team, for my entire downline, um, with my success partner. And we're going to run those to add to our networks. We're going to then host a paid challenge group every single month. That's 30 days long that we can then, really build, um, amazing content for, to like help people go, but that can be reused, right? That's not a brand new challenge group. That's having to be invented every single month, which is super fucking hard to do, which stresses me out, which is honestly why I'm not running a challenge group this month. Like I'm not running a paid challenge group for the first time in like ever this month because for my team, cause I'm like, I'm fucking done. I got to figure out what I'm going to fucking do. Right. And then I now have my own Becoming too fit to quit VIP accountability group. Right? That's, my, that's my team name is too fit to quit nation. Right. And so, um, so I have all of my personally sponsored coaches in it and my customers, my past cus customers. But I told Vicki earlier today, like this week, 
the last seven days, I've been more fucking productive in my business working one hour a day, not doing even a full power hour, not doing my little time blocks, but going, what am I going to do today that's going to move my business forward, right? I told her I've invited like over 40 people in the last couple of days, and I already have over 25 people in this group, people who I've had lost contact with, people who might were my customers, and they're like super stoked and fired up about this new group, right? And I've now talked to all my leaders, and I'm like, duplicate this, do this system. If we're all doing the same kind of system, you know, it doesn't matter if you have three people in your VIP accountability group, right? It'll grow. Yeah. But it helps you stay in constant contact with your customers and it's duplicatable. I think that that's the thing is that people get, people get so confused because they're, and they spend so much time wasting their time on non-business building activities because there's too much fucking information out there. And there's not a simple, simple process that we as leaders can, like, I feel like as leaders on a team, we all have to be saying the same thing. Does that make sense? Like there's different ways to do it. There's different ways right. to post things and, and do stuff. But I feel like there's always like, you know, I mean, and you're going to get your coaches started, right? Maybe a little bit differently and stuff like that. But like, there should be like that same kind of simple process, right? Like plug and play. It's, I think the VIP group, I think every single coach should have one. Um, and you know, like uh, oftentimes, like every single time I'll tell my brand new coaches, like you are not going to run your own challenge group at the beginning. So whether they do the 30 day group or if they sign up in the middle of the 30 day group or whatever, I'll add them in my VIP group. So they're still in there. They're still a part of a challenge group and then they can join the next 30 day group or whatever. But then they can go, if they get a challenger, if they get a coach, they could put that in their, their little, their little VIP group, you know, whatever they want to call it. And it's easy. It's duplicatable. And you continue to have that relationship with your, with your clients, whether they're your coaches or your customers. And the really cool thing about this guys is take, take example, my, my coach, Danny, y'all know who she is. You watch her on IG story. She's like a hoot to watch, right? Like I get sucked in her vortex of Instagram story. Cause she's so fun to watch. But anyways, this girl has been a challenger of mine for a year and a half when I made, and she refused to drink Shakeology. She was like, that shit is nasty. I'm not drinking that. Cause I sent her samples like a year ago. Right. And she's like, that's gross. I ain't doing it. I'm going to do this. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, girl, you do you. So I made this VIP group. And then I was like, I started messaging people, my coaches and my, or my, my customers that were not participating in it any, anymore. And I said, Hey girl, I just wanted to check up on you and see how you're going on your journey. Cause I don't see you posting anymore. She was one of the girls that were like, Oh my gosh, I've fallen off the wagon. And I said, why don't you use the group for accountability and support? If you're struggling post in there. And she was like, Oh my gosh, you know what? You're right. She freaking did that in August. So she signed up as a coach in, so she, she did it in July. So she used 30 days of July as accountability. She signed up in August. Since then, she's lost almost 35 freaking pounds. She signed up as a coach. She's drinking Shakeology. Come to Super Saturday. She came to Super Saturday for her first time, by like yeah. by herself, like perfect freaking example how something like this works because you can keep like, it's really hard to go in your customer base and your, in your online office and continue to email people and text them and stuff. And if they're not on Facebook, if they're not on Instagram, like it sucks trying to communicate with them. But if you have everybody in one and I just, I just, whatever, if they're not on Facebook, then obviously they can't be in here, but you could Marco them or whatever. But if they, if they're all in one area and you can see, like, you know, who checks in every day or every other day, and then you can message them and be like, Hey girl, I know you haven't been doing X, Y, and Z. Is there anything I can help you with? Or, you know, whatever it really helps. It really helps. And then, then it also helps them. Like I always say, like the other day I did a video for those of you that are in my, I think Dana's the only one that's not in there. because She's not my PS coach, but, um, I should just freaking add her anyway. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, it's okay. I have my own, so I don't, I don't want to oh. get that. <laughs> um, but like I said, you know, I'm not just in here to be the leader. Like we're all, we all should be each other's cheerleaders in here. We're all not just in here for support and accountability. And everyone was like, Oh my gosh, thank you. I needed this. I needed this. And, um, because I don't want to be the only one like communicating with everybody, you know? And I think that's also another way to build coaches because yeah. 
then they're showing up for themselves. And then they're also supporting and encouraging and motivating and empowering each other. So, so my things are a little bit different too, because I want them. So obviously I'm using it for support for my customers, but I'm also using it to find coaches, right? Right. right. I know from my experience and I know from me that the best coaches are people who are in love with the products. Right. Yep. And so I'm really trying to go more product fo focused and like more really focusing. Like I just told all of my team, all actually all my leaders are now Emerald and above have all committed to a program and we're committed to get our best results that we have ever gotten between now and the end of the year, even through the holidays. Like, so we've all kind of committed together. And so that's kind of my deal, but I know you have like different things. So like the cool part about like, like I've always loved challenge groups, but like when challenge groups got really complicated and like all fancy, like I'm not fancy, I'm not creative. I'm not a creative type like person. And so like, that was always like really hard for me is coming up with like all these fancy graphics and bullshit and stuff like that. Cause I'm not good at that. Um, like I made a fucking cover photo for this, this, uh, this, uh, group yesterday. And they were like, oh my God, like my best, my coaches in my chat that I have were like, oh my God, I can't believe you just made that crazy thing. Cause you never make stuff, you know, but like I, um, so I'm doing mine a little bit different cause I want to be focused on the coaches, you know, aspects. So I'm doing, um, so I am doing motivational Monday, tasty Tuesday, Wednesday is work for it Wednesday. So like, I want them to post what they're working on the next seven days, like not not on a Monday, but on hump day, because a lot of times that's when people kind of fall off a little bit. So like I'm having them post like not just health and fitness, but like, like today I posted in there. I'm like, what are you working for? Like, what are you actually moving forward? Like this next week, are you trying to get more sleep? Are you trying to be more present in your relationships? Like I've kind of made it like a whole life wellness group. So we can talk about like everything more, you know, like, are you trying to stay on budget? Are you, you know, so I'm kind of like doing it that and then I have flex Friday and then I don't have Saturday. I have success day, success Saturday. Cause a lot of times people don't get results that they want, you know, like on the stats and stuff like that. But then they, they want to be like, what, what are you proud of this week? Or, you know, what happened and stuff like that. And then I'm doing self care Sunday, not Sunday, Monday, like you are, but like, <clears throat> so I'm doing, you know, like a theme like that every day, which is what we used to do a long time ago in all the challenge groups that I got the best results in and that everyone else did. And I think that it's, like, I think that minimizing your time and only focusing on the business building activities, like, like I said, I haven't done a full power hour this past week, like my actual written down power hour, but I've been more productive in moving my business forward in this week than I have in the past six months. Like, honestly, good, you know, so, good. so it doesn't, you know, not, not, not having it be like perfect being okay. If it has to be perfect or being okay with being it. okay with it being not perfect. <laughs> I was actually just reading the slide edge yesterday about talked about course correction. Like with this, like they were talking about like when you go like fly an airplane or like when they took like the challenger to the moon to have people walk on the moon and shit only on course, like something like 2% of the time. Right. So it was only perfect. 2% of the time, everything else was them adjusting yep. and trying to stay in there, you know? <clears throat> I think one thing that everyone needs to start doing is like, <clears throat> I mean, doing the groups, doing all, all that jazz, but the real issue that I see and I know you see and a lot of us see in with, with our own business and other coaches is people think that they're, they're not being productive or they're not moving their business forward because they're frog, which is always inviting. It's always inviting. And Meg said last night to put that on your very first thing that you do in your power hour. First thing. And she said, like she said, as, as the bare minimum, you should be inviting 10 people a week. That's the bare minimum. She personally invites 20 people a day. And I loved the fact that she said on her like page or her Instagram, she'll post engaging like adding value by engaging. So anyone that questions or comments on those, those are the people that she connects with and then builds the relationship with and then invites. Yeah. So, well, they're already easy, right? So it's already right. people who are, right. I mean, that's exactly what you told us to do. You know, I mean, you know, you said that you go back and you look at the people who are commenting on your things first and you contact those people first. Yep. I start doing that too. And I've had my coaches start doing that too. And they're actually seeing 
results. We're opening. Weird. There are already people who are, hello, they're showing up on your shit, like commenting. They already right. care about your stuff. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, Katrina. Oh, Lily Buns. Oh, oh. my God. It's making me angry that I can't. Oh, look at those oh, cheeks. My oh, my God. I'm going to snuggle the sh out of her tomorrow. All the baby snuggles. Um, but so I know, um, like, I, I see you girls that are posting in the Believing in You group, and I see what your goals are and stuff. But also, like, and I'm not going to call anyone out on here, but I see some people's goals, and then I see their daily actions. And I'm like, wait a minute, like something's not aligning right here. Like you can be like airy fairy as much as the next person and be like, I'm manifesting all this amazing shit. Right. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. But that, the universe is not going to provide and give to you the things that you're not actually working for. You can't just manifest all that goodness and diamond and $10,000 a week and all that stuff into your life. You have to actually have action steps aligned with it. And when I see someone like, like I could very well look at my, oh, that's not my miracle morning book, but I could look at my goals and be like, okay, well, my goal is to make $10,000 in the month of October. But if I looked at my action steps, I could be real and be like, well, did I do my power hour today? Did I do my power hour yesterday? What, how many times have I invited? Do, do they align with what I'm working for? Like, I know a lot of girls want to be diamond by the end of the year. Are you inviting every single day to the coaching opportunity or to your challenge groups and investing in your challenge groups every single day to help you get to where you want to be? Because you got to be real and we got to be real as leaders because if we can't be real with ourselves and be like, well, I'm actually not doing the action steps, but I'm going to start recruiting coaches and then I'm going to be like, well, why aren't they working? Why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they hitting success club? Why aren't they hitting emeralds? Because you're not doing it. Like you hear us all the time. You can't do what you expect. Like you can't expect more from your coaches than you're not doing yourself. Does that make sense? So like another thing that she said last night is your brand new coaches will take three to six months to do what you are doing. And she's like, I know I just scared a lot of you like, holy shit, it's going to take them that long. But if they follow, if you are constant, are consistent. They to you and take your advice. Huh? That's if they listen to you and take your advice. This is true because there's, there's some that just sit there and be like, years before they start doing that. Hey, like I, you. I that. <laughs> but if you are, cons if you are consistent with what you are doing and you show up every day and you're making progress, you're hitting success club, you're recruiting coaches, you're having challengers, you're having challenge groups, your coaches are going to continue to sit there and watch you and People do more what you do than what you say to do. Does that make sense? Like I could sit there all day long and tell Cindy, Cindy, you need to do this. Cindy, you need to do this. Cindy, you need to do that. For two and a half years, I freaking told the girl. Two and a half years. Is there someone in the room? Yeah, it's Michael. He's working from home today. Um, two and a half years, I told her. And guess what? Maybe, maybe ironically, it was when she actually wanted to stop making it a hobby and work, or maybe ironically, it was around the same time that I actually started developing systems. I'm like, Hey, this is what I do. This is how I say, instead of just like, here, do this, do this, do this. I don't know if that was ironic or not, but convenient timing, if you will. Or maybe once Cindy started working, I was like, shit, I really need to get my shit together and I need to start du duplicating systems or doing duplicatable Cindy's systems. Gonna me. Gonna <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. If she's getting consistent, I'm going to get consistently nagged now. <laughs> I need some systems. <laughs> yeah. I know. And it's interesting. I was actually just talking to Vicky and commenting in the leaders group, in the Mr. Republic leaders group yesterday about how I have a coach right now that is refusing to do what I, who constantly comes to me for advice, but refuses to, to use the advice that I give her. And um, I'm like, as I was literally typing out the, what the situation was, I was like, I ended it. I'm like, and now that I'm typing this out, I am realizing that this coach is exactly like me. And <laughs> how did you make me do that? How did you get me to stop 
doing this and actually giving me advice. She's like, the keys you can't. You just gotta show up and you gotta set the example, right? Same with our kids. We can tell our kids not to do something over and over and over again or to live a life of integrity or to be honest or to treat people with respect. But if we're not treating ourselves or other people with respect and we're an asshole to other people and, and we're behaving a certain way, that's how our kids are going to behave regardless of how we tell them to. Right. Dude, only if that worked in the favor of being a picky eater because I eat vegetables all day long and Gage still won't eat all the vegetables all day long. <laughs> but, so, I think it does work as they get older. Like both my kids, like now, like both my boys especially, like they – know how to read labels like they see me read labels they see me talk about nutrition they they read labels like my oldest son who now has like all these freaking choices at lunch now and stuff like that will choose the salad bar and you know get big chicken salads and stuff like that so there's always babies on here okay. here too she's homesick i need one to come sit on my lap here i'm gonna grab a candle and it could be my baby <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I think that, I mean, like we just got to do it. Like who, someone posted, oh, Hillary posted in the big team page and she's like, how do I get my, how do I get out of the rut? And Cindy and other people just said, just do it. Just go for it. Like, I think all of, like we've all, we've all hit a wall. We've all hit a rut or been in a funk or, you know, felt like we're stuck whether it's our nutrition or our fitness or progress or business anywhere. We've, we've been to a point where we felt stuck. How do we get out of this? We're looking for that fairy tale motivation to be sprinkled on us to like give us that kickstart, right? You just got to do it. Take a shot of energize and do it. Like we, we just got to do it. We have to show up and we have to stop waiting for the perfect person to come to us or the perfect post that we do to make everyone come to us or signing up the perfect coach that's going to be a rock star and we can just sit back and be like oh I could just feed off of her and come with team cycle bonus or what the f that never happens but I'm just saying like we have to just do it we have to show up and we have to be the leaders that we want on our team we have to be the leaders that we want to have. We want to be the leader or we need to be the leaders that we look up to. You know what I mean? Like you need to be your best mentor and we need to do the work. We just need to do the work. Do you guys agree? Mm-hmm. And that was something that held me back for a long time is thinking you had some kind of secret sauce, you know, I like, and I see it in my coaches too. Like, looking for the perfect personal development post or mm-hmm. the perfect tracker or the perfect tracking system. And it really doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to freaking do it. Like Absolutely. That, that was when I finally accepted responsibility for that and just did it, just did, just said, okay, I'm going to do the things that Vicky has told me to do in the past. And all of a sudden I went diamond. Like in like four weeks. Yeah. Four freaking weeks, guys. After struggling to be emerald for two and a half years. Yeah. And so it went out of emerald for two and a half years. You know, it's, and, and it doesn't, and when I apply that, like, I know that it continues to grow like that, you know, and my problem is doing it consistently over and over again. But I think I really have found a system that works for me, that works within my life, that now I can be okay with that, like, and not have to work that many hours or anything like that. You know, I was thinking about this, what you said about Meg saying that she invites 20 people a day. So she's a top 10 coach, a millionaire's club, a Mm -hmm. three time elite coach, elite coach. She's a star superstar diamond right now. While those things are amazing, like, and I would love to have that, like that's, you look at that and you're like, okay, she's inviting 20 people a day. What happens if I invite three people a day? Right? Like, I mean, I may not be a 15 star diamond, but I'm probably going to get my full-time income. Right. Right. I'm probably going to be earning 50 to 60, $70,000 a day or a year, a day, a day. Whew. 
but you know what I mean? Like a lot of people have a hard, a really hard time with like the big successful big, people mm-hmm. in this business, right? Like I know a lot of my coaches are really intimidated by like Andrea and Joelle and stuff like that. And like some of the superstar diamonds, because they're like, I just can't do that. Or they just have a hard time grasping the concept of someone making $15,000 a week in this business or $20,000 right. or more. Right. And even though we know it's true, cause we know those people and we know that they're actually earning that income. Mm-hmm. Um, some people just can't, they ha- don't have the capacity to dream that big or to have that vision. But if you tell someone, if you could be doing just a fraction of that earning and you can earn a thousand dollars a week, that's like, holy crap, I could do that. Like, right. I can do that. you know, it makes it much more possible, you know? Well, that's Meg also broke that down last night. She's like, okay, so these are the bare minimums that you should be doing. Like she actually broke down what we should be doing in our power hour, in mm-hmm. our power hour. She also said one thing that I loved that she said is doing a life power hour with your success partner once a week. Oh, that's a good idea. Like, together. Um, but, but she, she gave us the numbers and she's like, this is the bare minimum guys. This is if you want to continue to grow your business. And then she said, but if you want to, and then she said like, you know, be diamond or star diamond or millionaires club or blah, blah, blah. You're going to have to multiply that by two or by four or, or, or by five or whatever. I got to watch it today. So it was, a, it was a freaking awesome call. It sure was. <laughs> I'm, glad I'm, I'm glad I wasn't on because then I could be quiet. Although I probably wasn't quiet for her, but you know, I'll know I probably just said some fangirl weird shit. <laughs> wasting 10 minutes of time. And instead she got to give you guys 10 more minutes of content instead of right. Right. wasting 10 more, t- 10 more minutes. Right. Fangirling. So, okay. I, I've never wanted, I mean, like I've always wanted unstoppable misfits to be like this bad ass mama jamma team, you know, but I think there's something within us and I don't think I, I want to say this and I hope it sounds the way I'm saying it, but for so long, I felt like I was the one with just the fire. And I feel like now I'm sharing the fire because I see so many freaking leaders like stepping up and like, like Dana and Missy, oh my gosh, you guys have been a tremendous help and awesome mentors lately. And I freaking am like, I cannot show or share as much appreciation as I feel for what you guys have been doing lately. It's freaking phenomenal. Missy and Jesse hosted a What is Coaching? That was freaking awesome. Like, I feel like the flame is not just in my court. Like it's fanning out. Like it's this horrible flame. That's like, you know, the Pacific Northwest. We just had it. yeah. But it's a wildfire. Like it's spreading now. And I feel like because I'm not the only one holding the torch or holding the flame. Like, I feel like I want this more because I see other people wanting it that bad. Does that make sense? And so if we like continue on fanning each other's flames and fanning our own and moving forward, like imagine the people that we'll be attracting because they'll want to be a part of something bigger than just themselves. You know, I'm all amped up. I swear my energy energized wore off like 30 (laughs) 30 minutes ago, but maybe not. I have something from the call last night that I could use some advice with. Um, Meg said something about, what was it? I'm making my notes. Um, the people who are like stay at home moms, they have a harder time focusing because they have the whole day to do it. And I know for me, it's so easy to procrastinate. And I was doing super good for like a week. I was, you know, hitting my power hour every single day. And then the past few days I got sick last week and then I just, Oh, I'll do it in the afternoon. And then the afternoon came and then I took a nap and then I watched TV. And the next thing I know, I didn't do shit for like two days. Right. So what is, what's your guys' advice for, for actually scheduling it? I mean, I get the whole power blocking and, and getting it done early in the day and inviting first, but for some reason I'm having a really hard time actually implementing it. So what, it so pers- for me personally, because I've been that, I've been that mom that had a full-time job and I've also been that mom who worked full-time from home as a stay at home mom. So I know that every day depends on your child. Or every day depends on, you know, your job or whatever. But the first chunk of time that you have in the morning, like say you get the rest of the kids off at school and the the little ones at home or whatever, spend your first, do time, time uh, power hour. Don't do like, I need to send out 10 invites, but do like 30 minutes, 30 minutes of what may called mom, your mom time, like 30 minutes when your, your babe's napping, you know, or 
you know, during lunchtime, do another 30 minutes. But do the first 30 minutes, do your inviting right there. Or 20 minutes or 45 minutes, whatever time frame that you have, do it first thing. Do the thing that's going to build your business first because if you put it off until later and then you're like, you know, like people with hypothyroidism, like Dana understands this, like in the middle of the day, you need to freaking take a nap. Like there, there's no, like you cannot convince yourself or take energizer coffee that's going to help give you energy. Like you need to take a nap. And so if one of those days comes and I push off my power, I'm like, I'm effed. Like I didn't get work done today because like I, my body needs rest, you know, or if you push your brain, you're like mush brain and you can't freaking talk to people. Like a lot of you guys have heard me on team calls where I'm like, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You know, like you have mush brain, but if you get that done right in the morning, right when you're able to sit down and stay focused, you know, you're inviting and then you check in your challenge groups and then you connect with more friends. You know, you do the things first that you need to build your business, but do it in a timely fashion that, you know, you can dedicate 30 minutes. You can dedicate 45 minutes or 15 minutes. Like she also said last night on the team call is coaches are more um, productive when they stick to times instead of giving it a set number. Like she said, you know, coaches that are full-time coaches or stay at home moms, if they say, I need to invite five people today, they'll take all day long to invite five people. Right. But if you say, I need to invite, I need to spend 30 minutes inviting, they'll probably invite more people within that 30 minutes because there's that, that time, like you have to get through that time. Yeah. Um, that's what I do too. And you know what I've been doing with my kids? Cause I have like super crazy busy schedule and I'm the only one also doing all these three kids like with now 18 million doctor's appointments and sports and, and all that stuff and everything. Plus working my other two businesses. One thing I realized was that I was working my accounting job because I thought that that was like me eating my frog in the morning. And, but technically my accounting stuff is not compounding, right? So beach body is compounding. So it is the slight edge and the compound effect. So I know that I need to get my, my beach body business work in first thing, like that's my new frog. And so basically what I do too, is I have all of my schedule. I have my Google calendar right on my phone with all of our appointments in it. But like, I actually, um, every night before I go to bed, I've been taking my, my, um, my, uh, my large paper, it's upstairs, my large paper planner. And it actually has dates. And I actually put in, I look on my phone for any doctor's appointments, whatever conferences yesterday, concerts yesterday. And then I actually put in the time block that I'm going to be working my business, my beach body business. And I treat it like any other important appointment now that I miss. Whereas before when I was back in a non-consistent rut where I was having a hard time str and struggling, I was just doing all my accounting stuff and that was constantly feeling like it was behind. So I would try to work that all day and say, Oh, I'm going to try to get all this much done. All this stuff would come in and then it would get to be the end of the day. And all of a sudden my kids are home from school and I'm really working on trying to be, as soon as they get home, I'm done with work and I'm helping with homework and making dinner and doing all these things. Right. And so since I've started doing that, it's like been fucking night and day and super consistent. And while I'm not at success club right now or hitting numbers that I want to be hitting right now, I know for, I know that, you know, that will happen in three months from now, which I'm planning on. So, and one thing too, I know Dana, um, had messaged me and we were talking a little bit about this to the inviting because I switched to that too. And since I switched to the time blocks instead of the numbers always gave me massive anxiety and I would literally, I would do that. I would avoid it. And since I switched to the time blocks, I was, it's like the night and day for me, like in making the ease and my like wanting to show up for my power hour, you know? And then one thing I talked to Vicky about, and I was telling Dana about it too, a little bit, cause she was asking how I do this. Um, so I, I told Vicky, I'm like, okay, so let's say there's some days you sit down and you don't have anyone to invite, especially because I hadn't been consistent in my business and I wasn't relationship building the way I should have and having a, a shit ton of challengers like I normally would have had to invite. And so I actually just created an Excel spreadsheet that is like, it literally has three categories. So it has, um, challenge group or challenge group or no, it has four categories. Now it has free group, challenge group, Shakeology and coaching right on the left. And on the top, it has the month, right? So it has like, you know, January, February, March, April, May, and it just keeps going right for the whole year. And now like 
Vicki was like, well, if you don't feel like you have people to invite, maybe you can brainstorm people you want to eventually invite. And so that's what gave me that idea. And so I created that Excel spreadsheet with one of my coaches and it's so simple. But what happens is like, if I'm like sitting there and I'm like, I have 30 minutes of inviting and I've sent out all my invites that are scheduled that I want to send out. Like, and I still have all this time left. I go to this spreadsheet and, or like, if I'm like, have a relationship built with someone that I want to eventually invite, I will put them on that list. Right. And then these are the people that I invite for the very, like, you know, for my paid challenge group or for a free upcoming free group. And what it's cool is that when I invite them, I just put a little X mark on the month. Right. And so that way then, cause my team Z doesn't keep track of that. And so, you know, let's say I invited Vicki to a paid challenge group two months ago or the coaching opportunity two months ago. And she said, not right now or whatever. And I've continued relationship building for the last two months. Now the very first people that I'm going to start inviting like two months from now or three months from now are those people I invited three months ago. Right? So it's this master list of invites. So that's one thing that's really helped me to, to, to trigger. Cause I know sometimes like people get like really, um, panicked, like thinking of people they're going to invite. Like they're like, Oh, I don't know who I'm going to invite now. Or they think that they've run out of people, but that way it keeps your list full all the time. And you always have this master invite list. That's constantly growing, right? Cause you're constantly making new relationships. You want me to post that in the team page? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it might help people like, cause it's on Excel. I know Dana was saying she doesn't have Excel, but you could also do I, Google I mean, Sheets. I don't oh, know. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I did. The but you, could, like, you could take a look at or something or, or I could do like a screenshot of it and you can just recreate it. Cause it's literally yeah. like the simplest thing ever. Yeah, yeah for it's sure. Been, like, a life changer for me. Like, because like I was all the time, like not knowing who to invite or not able, I was using those go for no sheets and I had a whole shit ton of them, like in a notebook. And I would like highlight people off and I'd be like, okay, these are the people I'd keep the date on there. So I'd have a notebook. And so I'd go back into my go for no sheets. But that was so complicated. It was so stupid. Yeah. Like, this is just you visually right there. No excuses. You just look and go, oh, who am I going to invite? Oh, I guess these people I got to invite this month better do it. And then you just send that message and just go. Yep. Yep. That's a good idea. You post it and then I'll re recreate it in a Google sheet for those that. Can I show you? Can I just, show you? just tell me if this even looks like what yours looks like? Because I'm like, I hear you and then I think I'm doing it right. Can I, oh, I can't, can I screen share? Yeah, you should be able oh, to. Okay. Uh, all right. So can you see that? So at the bottom, I just have invite mm -hmm. myself. Can I do the date, the months like that? Yeah. So then on the left column, you're going to like insert a column, right? So, cause you want to have the names. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Sorry. Yeah, so and insert, then, insert a column there. Insert one to the left. One to the right. Yeah. Oh. And the, oh, that's right. Oh, went to the left. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so then, like on line two, right? You're gonna put like coach invites and bold, okay. bold it, right? And then like scroll down, whatever, 10, 10 rows, and then put challenge group invites. Oh, okay. See, I didn't right. have, oh, you have it on page. Oh, yeah, that works too. No, you know what? I may get confused if they're on different tabs. I may. Okay, yeah. Like, Actually, you know what? I'm totally gonna change mine to this anyway. This is way better having them on sheets. I don't know why I didn't put them on separate sheets. Um, oh, and then you just put the eggs. And yeah, then what so, do like, you so like you just put like, like, let's put my name, right? So put my name there or whatever, or name, whatever, mm -hmm. someone's name, Cindy. Okay. So let's say what are, what is the month today? So it's, or, or let's say it's October. So you invite me in October. So put an X, you invite me to the coaching opportunity. Okay. Put an X, right? Now, when someone accepts, when someone like is not, you know, like, let's say they, they join as a coach or they join challenge group. I take them off this list, right? Okay. So I'm not seeing them on there anymore. So, okay, let's say, so that way I know if Cindy's on this list, she said no, right? If she's still on this list. So okay. now let's say it's January and I said no to a challenge group mm -hmm. or there's a free group, but let's say this is a challenge group one. Yeah. Right? So basically I'm going to go through and I'm going to look and see who I invited like two to three months ago. So okay. I'm going to go look, see who I invited in October and those are going to be the first people on my list or the people who have no X, right? Because what I do too is like, let's say I meet someone who's totally rad, but we're just not at that point. And mm -hmm. I know I want to eventually invite them to a challenge group. I put them on this list 
and with no X, right? And okay. so then when my next challenge group comes, you so, so the people that are like my hot prospects that I'm, that I really like, that I want to invite, I'm like mm -hmm. messaging like, or CCQing like every four days or so. Like yeah. that's my like, own thing. So that way it's kind of a short time span to build up, you know, over a month, you could totally build a good relationship with someone. So then like my next challenge group, so I put them on the list right then while I'm doing these four day things, right? And then I invite them. So like, let's say it's time to invite for my next challenge group. I invite them, put the X on, right? Whether they say yes or no, like whether they ignore my message or not. Bless you. Put, put the X on. And, but those are the people that I invite first. So I know when it's time to invite, I have a list of people that I've already been connecting with. Now let's say someone says no or not right now. I then change them to every one week or every two weeks CCQing in my team Z. Okay. Right. Cause so that way I'm still building a relationship yeah. with them. It's just not as tight as it was before yeah. I invited them and then yeah. I'll invite them. Okay. So, so this is exactly how I, Vicky, you should just fucking come over and slap me in the face, right? Like you just need to fucking start choking me out. It just needs to happen. So I'm telling you guys this, because this is exactly how I got my highest success club, how I was able to recruit. I don't know, my highest was like seven coaches in a month. Was exactly the system. When was the last time you did the system, Cindy? Shut the fuck up. Shut <laughs> the fuck up. Is this why I should throw punch you? I'm doing it right now. I'm doing, does that count? We're not going to talk yeah. about the past. We're not going to talk about the future. We're going to talk That's about right. the present. That's right. Present. Yeah. So this is why I don't know why I didn't do this because it's so stupid, right? Because literally I got like success club 24 or something like that. I recruited seven coaches and this is exactly what I was doing for the, the 45 days before this. Right. And then I stopped, but I was like, mm, I don't know. I'm done. But yeah, so I am doing this and then I go back to it and this is exactly how I always work my power hour and how I always work my invites. Right. So, and it's so simple. And it's so duplicatable, right? See, going back to the whole thing where we talked about duplication. Mm -hmm. I, think that's, I see my coaches and so many of them waste so much time trying to find out who they're going to invite. Or like you said, I see them on social media. Like some of my coaches who've never hit success club, who say that they're working the business. I literally see them post on every single person on Facebook's page. Right. So I'm like, I'll go to do something. And I'm like, oh, and that's on. the majority of coach, other coaches. Like, why are you talking to other coaches? Oh, they're already here on this coach's page. Why, what the fuck are they doing? You know, like, so, you know, but so you gotta just like, so like something that's duplicatable because like they, they get scared about the inviting process. But I feel like when you just do that, it makes it so easy because then, you know, you have a group that you're inviting to, right? So you have a free, we know that Vicky's going to be running a free, free cleaning group. Um, and then I'm starting to run different groups with my team, um, which is what I used to do. And so now, you know, and Vicky has a paid challenge group. I have a paid challenge group every month, you know, and then you have your VIP group to put people into. Right. And so for, cause you know, it's really hard. It's, it's so much easier to regenerate another sale from someone who's already said yes to you than it is to get a new sale. So those are where you're going to get a lot of your coach recruits from is from that VIP group. Yep. You know, so like, it makes it so easy. It makes it literally so easy to invite. And, and so that's basically what I started doing when Vicky told me to switch. Cause I was doing the numbers and she told me to switch to doing a time instead of a number. And then I would be like, well, what happens if I run out of invites? And that's what gave me the idea to do the, the invite list. Because if I'm not inviting, because I don't have anyone to invite or I've already invited everyone on my list. I'm putting people on that invite list during right. that time frame. Right. And the way to, if I can just interject real quick, when I was looking at like, Oh, I have to invite this many people. I started looking at people as numbers. Yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. Versus like, yeah. Versus like, okay, who can I help? And like, and everybody's been asking like, Oh, what's changed? What's changed? And I'm like, that's it. I just, I spent last time and I did my inviting first <laughs> and I just like, I did what I was supposed to do. Cause like you say, Cindy, you can tell somebody all day long what you're supposed to do. And then you not, you find out at the end of the day, you're not doing it. Right. So, no. Yeah. Yeah. And so like lately, like I invited a whole bunch of people to free groups 
And, you know, and and it compounds, right? Like, don't be like me and don't be like me and freaking come in and out of this business because, you know, like, I mean, I still have a lot of residual income. Like the majority of my income that I get every week is because I've built the business over time. Right. And I have a lot of coaches with me, but like, it could be so much more. And I fucking kick myself every day because this business is truly built on momentum and it's built on simple momentum. It is not built on grand gestures. It is not built on a freaking rock star coach. Like I know I've heard a lot of my coaches, they'll say, Oh, well, well, Joelle, she's not very present on social media. And Andrea must be her like giant unicorn. And I'm like, dude, I was there when both of them were beginner coaches and they were the same level and they were success partners and they have worked tirelessly, both of them while they, while they promote it differently on social media. Like, it has all been simple steps. There has not been any kind of crazy shit that's happened. They have both done the exact same thing as far as like small, daily, everyday actions over five years and not coming in and out, right? Yeah. Like I do, not getting motivated and then coming out and getting motivated and coming out. Like you gotta, you gotta have a, a system that will, that you can sustain, right? They always say like, be here in one year, like do something that you know you can do every single day and continue doing it every single day for the rest of the year. That's what I'm trying to do is, you know, and keep my blinders up. Cause that's what happens to me. Right. And my fitness, Vicky all the time is yelling at me because it happens with my nutrition, with my fitness programs, with all, it's just like my personality, right? I get distracted and want to go on to something else. Cause I think it's going to work better. And I already know what works in this business. I already know it works in weight loss. I already know it works in beach body. Small. Right. Keep it simple. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to take a picture real quick. <coughs> Lily's going to. Yeah, I'm so proud of you for making that spreadsheet, by the way. You should post yours because it's way better with the sheet. Yeah, you should post yours, Dana. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> blank. So, you know. <laughs> what? It's okay. It's still blank. We'll so do it. That's okay. Yeah, that's even better because then people can save it to their. Yeah, they can save it and then create um, their own. Yeah, because I totally need that. I need to do that with the, sh- with the sheets instead of having it all on one page. You ready? Oh, Liz. No. Okay. So, yeah, it starts with us. And we are a team. We are a family. We are all leaders. Moving forward, we can't focus on the past. Don't worry about the future. We're going to focus on the present and what we can do today and every day moving forward. To get us to where we want to be. I ate homes. Thanks for doing this too, by the way, the weekly leader zoom. It's really been helping me. So okay. I'm glad that you guys. That you I personally am, I'm being selfish and I, I love doing it because I um, thrive when I'm like face to face. Like you guys give me energy to like, like I, I bet you a hundred and ten, I, I would bet a hundred bucks to each and every one of you that I am more productive on Wednesdays after I get off my leader zoom in my own power hour than I am any other day, just because like the energy and the vibe, it's totally like a peacock or extrovert kind of thing. I feel like, like okay, I'm, good, good, good. Well, I'm going to go listen to the call now because I wouldn't yeah. get on. Oh, me too. I got to go. I, gotta go. <laughs> I just pulled it up. So yeah, I am excited. Good, good, good. All right. Love you all. And I'll see Bye. you.